Hi everyone. If I look at religious texts such as the Bibles of the Jews and the Christians or the Quran, I find they live in the past. They're all based on ancient myths and legends where planets, suns and the entire universe is created from nothing and humans are made from mud or clay or water. In fact, almost all civilizations use the metaphor of humans being created from clay. When I started researching this, I found several people just as curious about this as I am had already done this and published a list of civilizations believing that a man was created from mud or clay. None of them specifying what mud or what type of clay, but leaving the term generic. Now for the last 2,000, 3,000, or even 5,000 years, this was good enough. There was no problem with this belief. But since we have ceramic teeth to substitute the weak natural ones, or artificial hip joints, we have OLED displays, airbags and telescopes capable of penetrating entire galaxies, we have found and are still finding more precise and accurate descriptions of and for the reality we live in. The word science and the often used derivatives such as scientific or scientifically accurate are often used without understanding the meaning or the principles behind this. The word itself, science, is a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. And this is from Wikipedia. Now, there are many different definitions and wordings for this term, which stands for a huge area of human development, understanding and knowledge. Looking at the various definitions, we see that they have in common not only the knowledge itself, but also the action or path to acquiring this knowledge. Something very important in this science concept and the associated processes is the testing and the scientific method, which in a shortened form would be observation, identification, description, experimental investigation, theoretical explanation of phenomena. This is then made public in form of a paper where everyone is invited to check the data and the methodology and try to find faults. After all the facts have been established, the data and the experiments have been verified, it is then elevated to a theory, but always subject to updates as science, contrary to religion, lives in the future. Theories get refined and increasingly accurate, which is why they change based on accurately described facts and not opinions, vague assimilations or even charades. What users of the word science and scientists also don't seem to understand that there is no longer an animal such as universal science, but we have branches such as biology, chemistry, physics, earth science, etc. These are subdivided into more specialized areas, such as biology, where you have anatomy, evolutionary biology, so every branch is broken down into groups, which are then subdivided into their specific areas of specialization, which can go on for quite a while. Now, we know what science is and what the rules are. Let us now see what this accurate and precise methodology has in common with religion. Nothing. And more nothing. Nothing has ever been discovered through reading the Bible or the Quran. Nothing useful has ever materialized by reading any of the old books. And they are not meant to be books of discovery and accurate descriptions. They are based on faith and live in a non-reality based world. A world where people don't ask realistic questions and where doubt is punished, not encouraged. Does any one of the old books describe any details what any human, even the ones from 2000 years ago, could handle, and some already suspected, like about our own planet, with plate tectonics, mechanism of volcanism, mostly covered with water, a strong magnetic field? Does it answer even the most basic questions, such as why is the sky blue? Does it explain Raleigh's scattering? No, it is just an old book. If you play with your bobby car, by all means enjoy it. If you want to race in your bobby car, by all means enjoy it. But if you arrive in Silverstone for the British Grand Prix in your bobby car, you will not be measured by the rules of bobby car racing. 
but the real world of racing which is enforced worldwide in one of the most tightly regulated high-tech industries, Formula One. And if you, in your dream world, have managed to morph your bobby car into a Formula One racer and want others to believe this too, well, prepare for a very rude wake-up call. My advice, free and gratis, leave your bobby car in the garage, don't brag about it and let adults race real cars in a real world governed by real laws and providing real results, not dreams. Muslims in particular are incredibly naive and gullible when it comes to science. Someone went and probably looking for something like science, clay, human, came up with a page on clay. He immediately declared victory and did what Muslims do best, copy-paste. What he did not realize, because he did not understand the article, is that this is an update in a scientific journal on protocells one of the models of how life could have originated without the interference of a god. He was just blinded by the word clay, not realizing the role of this very specific clay. Oh boy. And in the Quran, thunder is mentioned without lightning. Now, thunder is under direct control of the respective god. Just because somewhere else in the book it mentions lightning, and you and I know today that lightning and thunder go together, does not automatically mean that the people writing the book knew this. If a god really wrote the Quran, then why not specify the words electric discharge? Why not specify that Adam was not created but evolved? Why follow the same identical legends and myths found in all the old books instead of stating facts which resemble the truth? Will humans one day be able to travel faster than the speed of light? Yes, I am sure we will one day, but not thanks to studying the Quran, but by real intellectual hard work. The kind of hard work that goes into experimenting, thinking, measuring and testing that these people do. If you need scientific results from any of the branches in science, go to those journals, not a religious book. People such as these have studied the brains of believers and have shown how they work. Everything is explained in detail, no vague implications are made, nothing is implied. If anyone goes to the pages of the National Academy of Sciences, you can find hundreds of examples of how scientists work. This paper on distortions of mind perception and psychopathology, for example, or what people think is what they see as the truth, what influences it and how this is amplified in psychological disorders, was done using a methodology accurately described and documented. Another paper is written by this person, who openly shows the qualifications along with the CV and all the details. Try that for clowns like Nagar, uh, sorry, Dr. Nagar. Anyway, her research resulting in this paper was about the self-deception mechanisms and their consequences. We get the introduction, then the methodology and prediction, followed by a detailed description of the parameters and all algorithms. Try that for the scientific <laughs> paper by Hamza Tsotsis. We see the amount of work and the level of detail going into a scientific paper. We see why people like me balk at the use of the word science by ignorant zealots who try to create an impression using words they don't understand and ideas they will, that will never stand up to any scrutiny. What is so wrong with the truth? The Bibles and the Quran are religious books which have nothing in common with a science paper. So why drag a bobby car to the Formula One scrutineers? Why drag the Quran into the spotlight of scientific scrutineering? Why not accept that these are simply vague, unscientific, religious books? Is that so difficult? But again, if you require the assistance of a God in your life, go ahead and believe whatever you want. But please, don't expect me to believe the same. Thank you for your time.